Okay, good afternoon, evening, good morning, whatever time it is for you. Uh, welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It is April the 29th, it's 2019. It's very nice to have you. Uh, if you are here, please could you put your name on the attendees list uh, on the hackpad. I will paste the link in the chat now. Um, our note taker today is Jacob. Uh, thank you for volunteering. And uh, what happens now? Well, basically, we go through a round of uh, what I did last week, what I'm currently blocked on, and uh, what I'm going to be doing this week so that we can all update ourselves. Um, after we've done that, we'll have some time for questions. And if you are on a cross team, if you're not on the JS core team, but you have an update that you'd like to share with us, then please add your update to the bottom of the list. And we will hopefully, if we have time, get time to, uh, to talk to you and you can share your update. All right, uh, in which case, if everyone's ready, uh, let us get going. Uh, so first on the list is me. Um, what have I done since last week? Gosh, my list was uh, really empty for some reason, so I don't think I did anything, but I put down something, so uh, it looked like I was busy. <laughs> but um, anyway, so finally, finally, okay, I've been ill for like two and a half, nearly three weeks, so it's been, it's been horrible, but I finally, finally finalized the Q2 AKRs. I've transferred them to the spreadsheet. I recorded a video today. Um, that is kind of done and dusted for this, this quarter, so we can just get on with it. Uh, which is good, finally. Um, I've also been working on a, uh, a project called ITEMPLEX, uh, which is a JavaScript implementation of EMPLEX using async iterators. It's towards the async iterators, async await endeavor. Um, and it's basically the bottom, the, the very bottom of the stack. Uh, and hopefully every, everything else can kind of um, build on top of it, but what MPLEX is, is it's a stream multiplexer. So you use one stream, but you can actually have lots of streams uh, interacting over that, just that one stream, which is great. Um, so initial tests, uh, it looks to be around 20% faster than uh, libpp MPLEX, the one that's currently in production, um, and about 10% faster than pull MPLEX, which is the one that will soon be in production. Uh, so that's good. Um, it's also way smaller. There's only about 250 lines of code, um, which, which it just makes it a bit more maintainable, makes it a bit more easy to understand. Um, and that's in comparison to around 700 lines of code in, in the P2P MPLEX, which is pretty tricky to pick through once when I first started looking at it. Um, so you can see the results. If you click on that image, you can see the, um, the stress test from the interface stream muxer uh, test suite. Um, and you can see on the left hand side is EMPLEX, and on the right hand side is the uh, the P2P MPLEX, the current one. So they are. You can see that they are. It is a little bit. It is a little bit faster, which is good. Um, and so, in doing that piece of work, I also created a module called It, it Pushable, uh, which is kind of like Pull Pushable, um, but it's just an async uh, iterable that you can push things to when you, if you really need to. So rather than, um, yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, so uh, what am I blocked on? I'm not blocked on anything. Um, I need to do some more testing for it MPLEX. Uh, it's, I've actually used it in the interrupt test. I've built an adapter class so that it can look like the old interface. Um, and the, uh, the exchange files interrupt tests um, pass and they are with comparable kind of performance to what's there before, which is not, not really surprising because it's having to go through a bunch of uh, extra hoops. Um, so that's good. Uh, yeah, so testing for that. Um, I need, I'm going to send a pull request for interface stream muxer because um, I made some so in, I made some interface changes to that module, um, which will hopefully be acceptable. But we'll send a PR and see what you think. Um, and if I have time for the remainder of this week, um, I will be uh, tr uh, going back and looking at trying to enable DHT in JS IBFS for reals this time. Um, cool. So that's me. Any quick questions? Okay. All right. Moving on to, so Dirk is not attending. He is in the wrong time zone for this, uh, but he has been working on adding the refs endpoint to IPFS, uh, which is really good. Uh, refs endpoint 
allows you to give it a CID and it will look through the links and give you back all of the links for that particular CID. Um, that's good because it's uh, it's used. We use it in the in the preload stuff uh, because we call the refs endpoint to get the remote node to slurp up all of those uh, all of that, all of that data because it needs to be able it needs to traverse the graph to be able to give you back the um, the, the CIDs. So uh, we get that um, we get that implemented and then we might be able to dog food ourselves and have a JSIPFS node being one of the preload nodes for itself, which would be super cool. Um, so he's been working on that um, and he has been looking at a bought after connect in the interface transport uh, and he is looking next at async await of interface transport and lead P2P and TCP, yeah, fair enough. Um, and he's looking into uh, GC, so JSIPFS will finally get garbage collection, which would be super cool. Because uh, at the moment, there's no garbage collection. So pinning is, is an interesting, <laughs> interesting tool because it doesn't, nothing's going to get collected. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, Lido is also unable to join the call. Uh, he's been working on some gateway improvements to JSIPFS streaming uh, conditional and range requests. That's cool. He's not blocked. And next, he is looking to expose IPNS at HTTP gateway, identify what is missing. Uh, I'm unsure what that is exactly, but uh, if you're interested, then go and ask him. Um, cool, that's Lido. Um, let's move on. It's Jacob next. Would you like to share your update with us? Yes. Uh, so in the libptp switch, one of the things we were doing is adding observed addresses to our own peer info. Um, while this is great for potentially letting people know what our external addresses are, we are not doing any validation on that. We're just slapping every observed address on there, which gives us a very long and proper, probably very incorrect address list that people then have to dial through. So we've shut that off for the time being until we do a better job of actually doing some form of validation before telling people what fake addresses are. Um, yeah, fix a small thing in the, D8, uh, in the libp2b daemon. Um, and then the big thing last week was working on DHT performance in libp2p. Um, we were seeing queries of about 10 minutes um, in a lot of cases. Um, and we were able to get it down to about under a minute. Um, a lot of this further improvements will need to come through network latency. But major things that we did was actually implement uh, Eschademlia in terms of more peers, more disjoint paths. Um, and more initial query peers instead of just going with three peers to start it off. So that sped things up a lot. Another thing was slow and offline timeouts. Um, right now we don't really have any abort ability in the switch, which we're working on um, with the async iterator stuff. And that creates a problem if we get a node that has a bunch of addresses like JS lib P2B switch libraries giving us a bunch of incorrect addresses. Um, it can take us a very long time to dial them all. So we can see like two minutes or more trying to dial a single peer. So it ends up blocking up the queue. So we added some timeouts in there um, to avoid super long timeouts on that. So if you are interested in seeing more about that, you can check out that PR um, that's just about ready to go. I'm gonna be doing some CPU testing against some of the configuration options there. Um, we created a basic simulation um, in the DHT so that we can run future changes um, and see what kind of performance we have there. So right now it's just doing like simulation on network latencies that are relatively accurate to what we're seeing now um, against the live network. So yeah, feel free to poke around there if you want to. I This week I'm gonna be working on PubSub issues, um, namely for pull Amplex, but I encountered an issue when I was refactoring the interrupt tests um, where Go publishing to JS does not work, um, and that's against master. So I'm going to be looking at that this week, along with the uh, DHT CPU balance against JS IPFS. Does anybody have any questions? Perfect. Cool. Thank you, Jacob. All right, moving on. Next up is VMX Volker. 
Would you like to share your update with us? Where are you? You're there. Sorry, I thought I'd lost you for a second, but it's fine. Do you? Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Somehow my window manager created like 1,000 error messages somewhere. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Um, so my update is um, I've polished the IPLD format cleanup PR, so now they are, should hopefully be really ready to be merged. So another ton of reviews, but things look good, and also more interfaces got synchronous. So the only asynchronous method now is calling a CID because you need to um, calculate the hash. Everything else is synchronous because all our implementations only use this synchronous version of it. This should hopefully even speed up um, the protocol buffer stuff a bit on the UnixFS. So we'll see. Um, that's almost done. And then um, next is I opened just before the meeting a PR to finally remove this restriction of having packages in Azure linting that packages below version one point something um, needs a tilde instead of a caret. Because it's super annoying if you do npm install and then you need to change the package JSON manually. So this was like a 15 minutes job, but it should probably save everyone in this call like an hour a week or something. <laughs> um, and next is, this is more like a cross team update because I'm now really deep into IPLD. Uh, I work on a thing called Stack. It's something in the Geo world. So if you're interested, just click on the link and read about it. So it's not really that interesting for the core team. But yeah, that's what I will be working on. That's all I have. Any great questions for Volker? OK, just to add on your point for allowing Kara in, uh, in pre 1.0. Uh, versions. It will save us time, but we know the rule, so we're just like, ah, oh, damn, forgot the rule. Uh, but it's mostly contributor experience and people who are new to JS IPFS that this really helps when you come along and get your PR failed for not using a particular upgrading or installing a new dependency or something and not uh, not using the right the right character um, is is really annoying and it means you have to go go back change it push again and wait for CI again. So it's really nice to be able to, to just quickly do that and not have to not have to worry. Just a, another barrier to entry to, that we're, we're getting rid of. So um, I am pro that change. Uh, all right, cool. If there's, oh, Alex, you had a question? Uh, yeah, so it looked like it only applies to use the carry for pre 0.1.0, sorry, to use tilde for pre 0.1.0, right? So the changes to, at the moment, it's used the tilde for everything pre 1.0, and the changes to use tilde for pre 0.1.0, right? Um, in short, like, I think <laughs> just do whatever NPM does, like, and not, because, yeah, because the developer experience is poor. Um, for yeah, new so basically, what I did is I just make a change, basically, that the, current behavior is the same or like the same like so so it doesn't change anything on the versions we want to have i think making it whatever npm does is a separate discussion so basically this one is a backwards compatible change to whatever we do currently okay all right, all right so it doesn't let's just let's just take it offline and uh <laughs> we, we'll talk about it in the issue uh maybe i'm misunderstanding what that change was all right, let's, let's move on for now, um, just so that we can keep the call rolling. Um, okay, next up is Hugo. Would you like to give us your update, please? Yes. Hi, guys. So last week, I had some holidays, so I didn't do much. Uh, I still managed to work a little bit on the um, IPNS resolve um, command. Those PRs are still uh, not merged. Hopefully, I'll get back to them uh, this week. Uh, I also worked on the on adding support for the file DOM API to uh, JSAPFS, HTTP client, and the interface. 
um, uh, doing this, I found out uh, a little bit uh, that we have some logic that is kind of duplicated all around. Uh, so I tried to to extract this logic, and basically uh, I arrive at this uh, at the spot that's not. I I don't actually know where to put this uh, shared logic. Uh, I started uh, I started the bike shed on Slack about where to put this uh, shared logic, uh, um, and yeah, we I'll probably make an issue or just choose the name and make a new repo and put stuff there, so we don't spend too much time talking about naming and bike sharing. Um, I also fixed the, uh, an issue. Actually, Ollie did most of the work. I only uh, cleaned cleaned it a little bit and dig into it so I better understand the the problem. Uh, basically, uh, one of my packages that uh, transforms a pull stream into a stream had a, a bug. Actually, it was um, a bug that uh, when I, when we start reading. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we start like um, draining the pull stream, and we didn't stop. Uh, 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 basically, we didn't catch the stop condition, so uh, I, uh, we fixed that. And yeah, that's basically it. I'm not blocked on anything. Um, next week, I'll hopefully finish the um, f uh, the Filebomb API pull requests and continue my endeavor on IPNS over DNS. Any questions? No? Cool, thanks. Awesome, thank you, Hugo. Uh, okay, next up, we have Jim. How are you doing, Jim? Uh, good. So uh, my update is um, I'm now officially part of GS IPFS. Okay. So part of the last week. So a dynamic data and capabilities work group working group is now an interest group. So it's still around, but um, uh, I guess for Q3, all my OKRs will be part of uh, GSIPFS. But I'm in the group now. Um, so I'll keep working on the stuff I'd sort of planned out um, for Q2, which is mostly getting ready for IPFS camp. Um, I've been playing around with Test Lab. Um, I want to try to use it for some things. Um, so that involves a lot of uh, HashiCorp uh, uh, projects such as Terraform, Packer, and Nomad. They're projects for installing stuff into the cloud. Um, and last week also had some discussions about what we're going to do for the apps course, which is one of the four courses we're planning for IPFS camp. Just uh, that's a broad, that apps could be a lot of things. So it's just discussions at this point, what we're going to do. And uh, for Falcon Friday, I did a, a fun little project you can click on and it makes up funny combinations of words. It's sort of, I'm trying to do sort of like, if you ever use Heroku and it makes up random names for your projects, I'm trying to do a uh, protocol labs flavor of that. Um, <clears throat> coming up, um, I have to, Spend some more time on PeerBase to get that so I can launch it. Um, the pinner's got some issues. I got to get that into production stable place we can live. Um, more test lab, more IPFS camp. I want to set up a, for PeerPad. I want to set up a weekly call where people volunteers can just hang out, sort of an office hour sort of thing. And um, on the projects working group, I'm doing this, something called integration mini projects. I'm trying to find ideas for little one week projects that. We could do. Okay, that's my updates. What was the what was the weekly call for PeerPad? Um, it's not just a project planning or um, for PeerPad. Um, I just want to have just a friendly, sort of a, almost like office hours that we're going to have for IPFS, but just for PeerPad things because um, I think it's just a project that will be in sort of maintenance mode for a long period of time. But I want to sort of develop it slowly over time. Hugo? Hugo? Jim, uh, did you record the um, IPFS camp call? I don't, I don't think we did. 
So, um, but do you have notes or something? I think Dietrich took some notes. So, um, I'll find those for you after the call. Thanks. Jim, can you link to your integration mini projects in the notes, please? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, and also, uh, I love this protocol words. When someone asks me a difficult question, I'm just going to be like, token call authorized selector. <laughs> Santine JSON. Network bit swap. Gigantic sea war. <laughs> Gigantic sea war is brilliant. Isn't that what we do already? Pretty, pretty sure that's what we do. What? <laughs> Isn't that what we do already? <laughs> Pretty sure that's what we do. That's Isn't what I do. <laughs> like that. Uh, it, no, it's okay. It, it is like just nonsense, nonsense uh, combinations of things, but some of them sound pretty plausible. So it's, it's yeah. really funny. I love it. Uh, cool. All right. Thank you, Jim. Um, moving on, it's Alex next. Would you like to share your update with us? Sure. So I've been. Uh, deep in async await refactor land. It's so good. It's so good. Like I've been removing like a third of all the code bases basically that I've been working on. Um, I am, yeah, this is amazing. So much fun. Yeah, so I put, functionality. No, I've just been deleting the tests. I mean, it's great. Like everything's so fast now, so easy to do releases. Uh, yes, all the functionality is intact. Um, so I've been, uh, yeah, so I did the PR for, uh, basically I've been working on MFS, the importer and the exporter. So MFS is done. I, I've got like enough of the importer and the exporter working locally to do MFS. So then I went back and did the exporter properly. Now I'm doing the importer properly. So the exporter PR is in. The importer prop, uh, PR is going to be in like tomorrow probably or maybe maybe Wednesday. Um, and then I will go back and like, after those are released, I can go back and uh, you know do the MFS release properly, and then probably submit a PR to IPFS uh, to bring that all in, uh, which would be amazing. Um, I also opened a PR on uh, Azure, Azure, uh, to add a linting rule uh, to um, require the await keyword in functions that have that are marked async. Uh, I'm just wondering what people's feels are. Uh, don't tell me now because we'll bike shed for ages, but do comment on the PR. Um, the reason is because it's super easy to just throw async everywhere. Uh, and when we do that, we create uh, micro tasks that, that get executed out of sequence in V8, or at least at the end of the tick, uh, which creates a tiny amount of latency. Um, so for really hot code paths, this can amount to the, the, V8, like the V8 engine basically doing nothing for a while. Uh, which is something that near form uh, like discovered in our code base when they did all the performance analysis. So it would be great to be able to follow through on their recommendations on that. Um, and adding the linting rule will just kind of automatically stop us from foot gunning ourselves again. Um, anyway, yeah, so there's a PR open for that. The links in the notes, it'd be great to have some opinions on whether or not we should merge that. Um, Cause I know Volker has some opinions about like, you know, you mark an interface async and it says this returns a promise, which is like, stealth typing so it should be burnt um but like i do actually yeah it's, it's a valid point it makes the ergonomics of the apis a bit more a bit more nice so you know let's uh, let's hash that out and and work out a resolution cool uh yeah so next week i'm finishing the async away stuff uh, i also so because uh because pedro is moving on to like some other things uh i looked at you know he's been a bit uh, absent on github um, and there are a bunch of like PRs for like interface data store and that kind of thing. So I pinged him over and said, you know, hey, are you still interested in maintaining this stuff? Um, and he said he wasn't. So I uh, volunteered to maintain these like modules that are um, not getting as much love as they possibly need. So I'm going to like, so there's some async await stuff that's outstanding on that, uh, which will unblock the repo um, async await things. So I'm going to do a release of all that probably tomorrow. Um, yes, you know, uh, the good ship, async await, only moves forward, never backwards. Um, cool, that's me. Does anyone have any questions? Hugo, your hand is in the air. Uh, so not actually a question, but um, related to the um, uh, linting rules in Asia, we already have a, a, a back 
like a backlog of some of them, like the console one, uh, the console log one, this one. Uh, I'll try to do to bundle them all in one release because it needs me a major. Because when I release that, everything will like fail in all the repos. So it's just to make you aware, all the maintainers, that when we do that, you, you all need to do some work to make all the repos green again. The major version will be a breaking change. <laughs> Sounds good. For the for the CI, it will. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, uh, Alex. Um, just to add on the uh, async await stuff, I can't remember if I updated you all, but the we are on fifty one percent of the um, modules that we said we would convert to async await for the uh, the async await endeavor. Uh, so we are getting there. Thank you all uh, for your um, for your efforts so far. It's been it, we are it's really good to see the progress. Uh, so thank you. We have like uh, a few minutes left for cross team updates. Um, so let's just quickly rattle through that if we can. Uh, Ollie, you're up first. Uh, just very quickly, it's already been mentioned on the call, but there is an office hours call for one hour before next week's IPFS weekly call. Uh, you don't all have to come, but I'm going to run it for a few weeks and use it as an opportunity to uh, answer questions from new contributors, people who are wrestling with how best to get started with IPFS. Um, so even if you don't turn up, I may be tapping you on the shoulder if I think you are the best person for this new contributor to speak to. I will be your router and I might be directing people at you. Um, if you're feeling extra community minded, please do lurk on the call. Thank you very much. Cool, thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, Jay, Chris, I think we're probably not going to have time to discuss this as much as you'd like, uh, but maybe you could quickly uh, tell us what you're curious about and we can discuss on, on the pull request or issue. Sure, yeah, just, uh, well, to let folks haven't met me know, I'm applying for the JS core team technical manager position. Uh, I love the way you all work here, so I've been in a lot of the calls, but this is my first time in this call. That particular issue I found looks like it has a couple of PRs that might be like one code review, which has already been done, kind of one refinement away from being mergeable. Uh, I was just trying to look at places where I could lend a hand that aren't, you know, I would love to get into the async uh, iterator endeavor, but that's probably more than I have time for right now. Um, so yeah, if that's a place where it would make sense for some cleanup to happen, you know, ping it on there and I'll see what I can do. Cool, thank you. And we have about a minute left. Terry, would you like to quickly uh, Hello. go? Yes, Terry, Terry here, Proto School. The GUI team adopted me. Very exciting. Thank you, Ali. Um, <clears throat> MFS tutorial has a new sequence of lessons proposed by Ali and myself. Feel free to click if you'd like to see it. Um, if you are building content for IPFS camp, which you think will include a proto school tutorial. I would like to know that you're planning on doing that so I can start helping you early instead of us having a rush at the end. There's a link here to open an issue and I did confirm with David and Molly that it's okay to do that in the public eye, so in the proto school repo. So I mean, there's a conversation there. I don't know what I've mentioned on this call and what I haven't, but there's a proto school weekly call on Thursday, so there's a link there if anyone would like to learn more or join authors, chapter organizers, all welcome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, and we're done. We're on time and we're done. Uh, and this is, well, okay, we should really go because it is six o'clock. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. It was lovely to see your faces again. And I'll see you next week. Uh, goodbye. Uh, good luck and happy IPFSing. Until next time. Bye.